Mrs Joanne Dobson has given notice of an urgent oral question to the Minister of Health, Social Services and Public Safety. I would remind members that if they wish to ask a supplementary question, they should rise continually in their places. The member who tabled the question will be called automatically to ask a supplementary. Clark, please read the question. To ask the Minister of Health, Social Services and Public Safety for his assessment of the systems in place for testing for suspected cases of Ebola in Northern Ireland. I call the Minister of Health, Social Services and Public Safety. Mr Deputy Speaker, in line with arrangements for the rest of the United Kingdom, viral hemorrhagic uh, testing of samples taken from patients in Northern Ireland is carried out in Port and Down laboratories following discussions with the imported fever service. The Regional Virology Laboratory has transport arrangements in place to ensure that clinicians in the Royal Victoria Hospital receive VHF test results in the shortest possible time. Where it has been agreed that a sample will be processed immediately in receipt, results will normally be available within 78 hours of the arrival of the sample in the laboratory. In addition, in anticipation of transport delays, for example, because of bad weather, the RVL has arrangements in place to have samples tested in Dublin. This would be in tandem with sending samples to Port and Down, which is a member of in Wiltshire. Uh, VHF testing will commence in Edinburgh on the 1st of December of this year, and the RVL is exploring the possible benefits for Northern Ireland in terms of contingency arrangements and reducing travel times. Mrs. Dobson for supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. The Minister will know about the very real worry and concern amongst the public, and people will be waiting to hear the results and hoping that the Ebola virus has not reached our shores. At this time, we are all holding our breath for the patient and their family and thinking of the staff at the Royal. But, Minister, we need to be aware that this may not be the first, this may be only the first of many scares, and perhaps the Minister could outline for us how these will impact on frontline services at our regional hospitals. Can I also give, give a commitment to us that at a time when our trusts are under such immense pressure, that these pressures will be no barrier for our health service adequately responding to future Ebola scares? And can he detail approximately how much a scare costs, what training is provided to staff, and how costs will be met in order to protect patients and the staff? Right, um, thank the, the honourable member for a supplementary. As she is aware, a patient was admitted to the Royal Victoria Hospital on Friday, the 7th of November, and tested positive for malaria. Um, because the patient had been in Sierra Leone, uh, and as precaution samples were sent to Porton down in Wiltshire and also understand to Dublin. Uh, we, the tests are, are imminent, the results are imminent, but we don't have them as yet. Uh, we may have before the end of this particular session. Um, uh, they're expected to be negative, but of course we have to be absolutely certain. Uh, uh, but everyone will be advised as soon as the results are available. We actually have been here before in Londonderry at, uh, at Alt McGelvin. So there was a similar scare there, which proved negative. And of course, in the Irish Republic in Donegal, there was a similar situation arose. So this is actually the third on the island of Ireland. We have a relationship, our arrangement with the Royal Free Hospital in London, where any patient uh, who is assessed as being, uh, having Ebola would be uh, flown. And there's arrangements have been established for that to be done rapidly. So therefore, uh, the, the overall treatment of anyone who has Ebola would be carried out I I on the mainland and not in Northern Ireland. Even, even uh, with uh, the worst s s uh, situation that could arise, the numbers would be expected in the United Kingdom to be in single figures. So therefore, whilst it's a matter of great concern to the public, we don't envisage the different place an inordinate burden upon either our health services or those in the rest of the UK. And in Northern Ireland, every health and social care trust has plans in place, and these were tested in a regional exercise on the 23rd of October. And indeed, we had all the bodies, including the trust, the public health agency, and colleagues from England and Wales and Scotland, and from the Irish Republic, all involved in that exercise, just to, to make certain that we are fully prepared 
in the event of a suspected case of Ebola or, in the worst case scenario, a confirmed case. Well, good, uh, and I thank the Minister for, for his response. Can I, I, I noted the Minister referred to the incident in Derry, and, and I do want to place on the record uh, the acknowledgement of, of the role that the staff played uh, in the Western Trust area on that one. But given uh, any potential worst case scenario, is there any specific public health advice that the Minister might offer to, to the wider public at this point? The, the reality is that. Uh, it's highly unlikely that anyone in Northern Ireland would uh, cont contract Ebola unless they had been in one of the three countries in West Africa, where, which of course are Sierra Leone, Liberia and Guinea, where uh, Ebola, Ebola is having a, a profound impact. Uh, arrangements are in place with, with all the major entry points within the United Kingdom and in Europe to ensure that they are screening for Ebola. Uh, my only advice would be at this point is if anyone has returned from those particular uh, countries that if they're showing any of the signs, which is sometimes an increased uh, temperature, that they seek health advice immediately, uh, that they self-repair, uh, refer, and prompt medical care is essential to improving the rate of survival from the disease. Uh, it's also this is important to control the spread of the disease and vaccine control procedures, procedures need to be started immediately. Um, I, I think w this is where we are at the moment. This person we know for certain was in Sierra Leone, within the area that was affected by Ebola. So therefore, the correct procedures have been invoked once self-referral took place. Uh, the, the public health agencies in the rest of the United Kingdom don't envisage spread within the United Kingdom from existing sufferers. It is far more likely to be brought to the shores of the British Isles from West Africa. Call Mr Gordon Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his answers to date. Can the Minister give us an assurance that, the, the, that all equipment at the Royal Victoria Hospital, including personal protective equipment, is fit for purpose and compatible with what is in use within the UK, the rest of the UK? I have to be slightly careful here uh, when I'm replying to the Honourable Member for North Down because uh, uh, patient confidentiality is absolutely essential in this particular instance and indeed all instances. Uh, could it say that the equipment being used in the Royal is absolutely in line with the rest of the United Kingdom and to the highest international standards, that isolation has occurred for the patient and that has been carried out under the strictest possible control situation. Uh, and I am content that everything that can be done in the Royal is being done. But remember, of course, this individual has tested for malaria, a disease which can be quite readily treated in Northern Ireland. There is no confirmation of anything beyond that as yet, so therefore I am content that all the correct precautions are being undertaken. McKinney. Mr Deputy Speaker, um, uh, could the Minister outline perhaps the state of preparedness of, at all our hospital facilities, um, including transport? Um, I have taken part in two COBRA conference calls with the other ministers, the Minister of Health for Wales, Scotland and my colleagues in England, uh, to try and make certain the United Kingdom as a whole is completely prepared for any potential uh, situation arising. Uh, also, can I just say to him that we have arrangements to make a transfer to the Royal Free from Northern Ireland rapidly, that that is in place and we have an air ambulance service available to make that transfer uh, as soon as required. But remember, of course, the patient will remain in isolation if, perchance, Ebola was um, confirmed in the Royal. So, therefore, there is no chance of the condition spreading, as it were. And I am content that there is a, a very good system in place to make certain that everybody uh, is ready and prepared to take this patient to the expertise, which, of course, is in the Royal Free. They have two beds immediately available, and that can be expanded up to 12 if needs be. And this is a hospital that has huge international experience in dealing with these conditions. Uh, can I say that the CMO, uh, the Chief Medical Officer, has also issued letters to all frontline staff who may be treating or admitting uh, patients, and all steps have been taken to ensure that we were re are ready. And so far, what I'm saying would indicate that those precautions are working and have been effective in this particular situation. Well, Mr. Jim Allist. What is the capacity of the isolation unit in the Royal, and does the Minister or his department have access to any data, perhaps from the border agencies, 
which would indicate the number of citizens uh, connected to Northern Ireland who are travelling or have travelled to the suspect countries? The, the, the isolation ward in the Royal has a capacity of one person. But remember, of course, we do have this relationship with the Royal Free, so there is there's sufficient capacity, in my opinion. We have had uh, numerous discussions about checking the entry points for, pe for people coming in from the three affected countries to Northern Ireland. There are no direct flights, of course, from West Africa to, uh, uh, to Northern Ireland. So, therefore, the vast majority of people will be coming through either London or perhaps through Paris and Brussels. All of those entry points, and indeed the Channel Tunnel, and all of those entry points have now got scrutiny and testing arrangements in place. And we believe that 97 per cent of the people who could potentially come into Northern Ireland uh, are covered by those arrangements. I am meeting my colleague, uh, uh, my counterpart in the Irish Republic, Leo Radzkar, on uh, Wednesday. And one of the issues on my agenda is to make absolutely certain that the arrangements in the Irish Republic are as strong as they are in the United Kingdom. We also have other step-up of beds available, uh, both here and in the rest of the UK. Uh, the Minister for Health in England, has suggested, Jeremy Hunt, has suggested that if this, the worst was to come to the worst, we'd be talking about single figures here for the whole country. So therefore, there's far uh, sufficient capacity within the United Kingdom to deal with this situation. And we have had several months' warning and have been taking all the necessary steps to make certain, should things uh, uh, go wrong, as it were, in terms of people coming in with Ebola, we are ready to act. Order. That concludes this item of business. Point of order.